Well, I just wanted to point out that, you know, when, when Dan uh, brings up, you know, how, you know, typically the prototypical quarterback didn't look nor sound uh, like, like a Lamar Jackson, he's absolutely right. And what happens is throughout history on too many occasions, you know, things of that nature are you were used and to this day are still used in various in various uh, avenues of our lives uh, to pigeonhole and marginalize folks. Um, and that's the beauty of sports. And I think it's important to bring that out because sports is the closest thing I believe we have in this country to a meritocracy where you can go out there and perform and that proverbial glass season isn't a glass ceiling isn't hovering over you and holding you down and holding you back. Because I assure you, if there was a proverbial glass ceiling, Lamar Jackson would have been held back. Folks already tried. They tried to get him not to be a quarterback. They tried to get him to be a running back. They tried to, they tried to dissuade him from doing what he knew he could do. And this innate belief in himself, this elevated level of confidence pushed him forward. Even when he was representing himself, all of us questioned it because we talked about how agents and what have you are connected to the NFL culture and they have the connections and they have the relationships and how unwise it was for him to be a representative for himself. And what did he do? He goes out there and he gets his $260 million contract. That's what he did. And then he goes back out onto the field and he performs. Think about all the quarterbacks we're looking at and think about what the NFL has opened itself up to. Because now that you've seen this guy go out on the field and perform that way, no, he may not come across as the most polished individual in the world. Who cares? He goes about the business of doing his job on a very, very, very elite level. And it's opened up opportunities for a whole bunch of people down the pike who may look a little bit like him, who may sound yeah. a little bit like him. And it's not going to get stopped. That is the beauty and the greatness and mm -hmm. the appreciation we should show to Lamar Jackson. And him winning a Super Bowl would just be icing on the cake. Yeah, yeah, Big J TV, like, comment, of course, subscribe, man. I'm coming back at you with another one. And uh, press the post notifications, man. Get in tune with, uh, you know, with every time that I post. And, yo, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, man. I'm getting a lot of people joining in. But that like and sub button ain't looking right. So, so make it look right. And we're going to be all right. But let's talk about Stephen A. Smith finally giving Lamar the kind of credit or respect that he deserves when they're talking about Lamar, must he win a Super Bowl to change his playoff narrative? Now, this is very different from what Stephen A. was saying at the beginning of the season, specifically asking if Lamar deserves his money. And I'm going to put a clip right here. Listen to Stephen A. speak, man. Let me say this, y'all. The question is, are the Ravens getting their money's worth on Lamar Jackson? No. The answer is no. The no. The is no. Lamar Jackson has to make sure, because we all know he's worth his money because he's box office. You walk through the turnstiles to see him. So I don't know what this debate was about whether or not he's worth his money. Of course he's worth his money. Man, ain't that wild? <laughs> ain't it wild how a dude comes from, does he deserve to be paid and get that money to uh, he doesn't have to really prove anything anymore? This is what I'm telling y'all, man. That's why I really respect a guy like Lamar and just individuals who just let the work prove it themselves. Let the work and the play on the field prove itself, right? Now, as the time of this recording, this is Friday night. We're waiting on to see, um, you know, the Ravens game versus the Houston Texans. I personally predict that Lamar and the Baltimore Ravens will be in the Super Bowl and they will lift that Lombardi trophy. In about three weeks from now, uh, maybe four weeks from now, I'm calculating. But does Lamar need to do it? I think yes. I think yes, because when you have individuals who, like Stephen A. Smith, <laughs> Shannon Sharp, and um, Bill Poley and countless others who can't imagine a player like this being not only the face of the NFL, because I'm pretty sure... I'm, I'm calling it right now. Lamar Jackson is the face of the NFL. And that's my hot take. Uh, somebody like that being the face of the NFL, a true dual threat quarterback who can actually throw really well in the pocket, which a lot of teams are surprised of. Being the face of the league, having braids, being different, not being the prototypical quarterback. 
it shocks them. Not only does it shock them, but it's against their programming and understanding. This is why you should have less old guys or old school guys in media, right? And what surprises me the most personally is that Skip Bayless has actually been very complimentary and has actually been a huge Lamar fan from jump. Very surprising compared to Stephen A. Snitch <laughs> or Stephen A. Snake. <laughs> Maybe Stephen A. A myth. You know what I mean? But long story short, these guys flip-flop. They don't have consistent takes. They just take things personal, and they only go with their only way of understanding. Shouts out to Kimberly Martin and Dan Orlowski for also being, you know, younger analysts who give Lamar his respect and recognize that he's more than just a dual-threat running quarterback, but he's an individual who has revolutionized the game and is able to enhance and grow his skill set each and every year. That's different. That's beautiful. And that's championship winning quarterbacking material. Now, I could be wrong. And the Ravens lose to the Houston Texans tomorrow. You know what I mean? I could be wrong, right? But I doubt it because it's about the work and the development that I've seen, not only as a Ravens fan, but just as a you know, I respect and admire of football, man. So what do y'all think about Stephen A. flip-flopping and <laughs> changing his mind? This is what always happens, man. Don't y'all hate this BS? When all these sports commentators and quote-unquote analysts finally see the light, man, F these dudes, man. Stephen A. is a fraud. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Stephen A. <laughs> finally giving a good football take about Lamar. Get in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Here's some videos on the end screen, man. Enjoy it. I'm out, man.